Hi everyone, my name's Gideon Cordova and this is my Council Roundup. The Council Roundup is just my opinion on what's taken place at the most recent Council meeting. It's basically a little summary of events just to keep you informed with what I've been up to and it gives you the opportunity to ask any questions about the things that took place in the Council meeting. Remember, all of the meeting minutes and agenda are available publicly and you can jump online onto the Kingborough Council website to download your copy. Also, the Kingborough Council meetings are live streamed on YouTube. So most Mondays, every fortnight, there's... Um, uh, there is a council meeting and just jump onto the Kingborough Council Facebook page. There will be a link there to the YouTube live stream of the council meeting. So what did we do at tonight's council meeting? It started at 5.30 this evening here on the 4th of July, 2022. It's a Monday and it's also NAIDOC week. So the first thing that I did was ask a question without notice about NAIDOC week. Uh, NAIDOC week is a, is a really important celebration, elevating First Nations voices and gives us an opportunity to participate and get involved and show our allyship and support for, for meaningful change and uh, meaningful improvement in the lives of First Nations people right around Lutruwita and indeed around the whole country. So my first question was about NAIDOC week. Next, I asked a question on notice about the Kingborough Waste Services report. So within the, an appendix of tonight's council meeting, there was there is a uh, quite lengthy but really interesting Kingborough Waste Services board report that contains lots of useful data. And so I asked a couple of questions about the recycling kiosk, for example. Uh, so there's recycling kiosks that are, there's one of the Civic Centre in Kingston and there's also one of the sports centre. And the idea here is that there will be more recycling kiosks rolled out around the place, uh, hopefully with the um, participation of local community groups. So something that's really uplifting is in only a short space of time right at the Kingston Civic Centre, in their recycling kiosk, they managed to recycle 45 kilos of coffee pods. That is 4,150 capsules. Uh, they also managed to recycle 29 kilos of books and magazines, 40 kilos of household batteries, uh, four kilos of light globes, 43 kilos of small e-waste, and 12 kilos of printer cartridges. So if you have printer cartridges, e-waste, small e-waste, light globes, household batteries, books and magazines, or coffee pods, you can drop those around to the Civic Center and have those recycled. The next thing that I asked a question about was short stay accommodation. Uh, and short stay accommodation is uh, obviously a, a really big issue at the moment because of the housing crisis. And the question that I asked was about what are the flow on effects for Kingbra? So the first question was, is council aware of the report into Airbnb and short stay accommodation that was released last week? And this was entitled Monitoring the Impact of Short-Term Rentals on Tasmanian Housing Markets, commissioned by Shelter Tasmania, uh, Shelter Tas, and produced by Emeritus Professor Peter Phibbs. The report found that, and this is a quote, Greater Hobart is overloaded with short-term rental properties. And the so that's the end of that quote. But what the report shows is that 6.8 times, there are 6.8 times more short-term accommodation uh, uh, dwellings in Hobart than there are in Sydney. So that's what they meant in their report when they say Greater Hobart is overloaded with them. There's 6.8 times more in Hobart than there are in Sydney. And the report also said that in Greater Hobart, the withdrawal of 195 properties from the private rental market or 0.2% of the total dwellings in Greater Hobart can move the vacancy rate from 2% where rent rises will be manageable to 1% vacancy rate where rent rises are likely to be over 10%, end quote. So what that quote is saying is that if you just take out 195 properties out of the greater Hobart rental market, that will depress the vacancy rate and it will take it down from 2% where at 2% vacancy rate, the laws of supply demand market economics mean that 2% vacancy rate usually keeps prices of rents fairly standard. But as soon as you drop that vacancy rate to 1%, all of a sudden you see this enormous spike in the price of renting. And that's the problem that we've seen uh, in, in greater Hobart. So I asked the question that, if Hobart City Council Planning Committee successfully moves for a change to the planning scheme that would cap the number of permits for short-stay accommodation, as they are debating tonight, 
on, on the 4th of July, 2022, if they're successful in attaining that planning scheme amendment to cap the number of short stay permits, will there be a spillover effect that will negatively impact Kingborough? So a spillover effect from those curbs in Hobart City Council might mean that if landlords realise that they can no longer make profit by taking housing out of the long-term rental market and converting it to short-stay accommodation, if they realise that there's no more profit to be made in Hobart City Council, are they going to move to Kingborough and exacerbate the housing crisis in Kingborough? So another way of putting that question, another way to frame that question is to say, is our council in Kingborough, are we worried that if landlords are no longer allowed to do Airbnb in Sandy Bay, they might start buying up in Taruna to do Airbnb there instead. And I was pleased with the response that the mayor gave, that the mayor is clearly aware of this issue and concerned about it and, uh, and basically said there'll be a watching brief on this. But I think there's more work that needs to be done by councils and local government, uh, working in tandem with state and federal as well, of course, but it's really critical that housing is a human right. It's a human right for everybody in Kingborough, bar none. So we need to make sure that everybody has shelter that is warm and is secure. That should be a human right. So what I'm going to do now is share with you the my screen. And that way you can see a copy of the publicly available council agenda. And then we will talk through um, the various... Um, the various things that took place at tonight's meeting. Here we are. So you can download this uh, copy of the public agenda on the Kingra Council website. Probably the main uh, issue that we talked about tonight. Oh, there was also the question on notice um, that I put in. Uh, th that I put in that appears in this council agenda. Here it is: the use of facial recognition technology in Kingra, and this is a really important issue. It turns out that. Um, the consumer advocacy group called Choice released a report on the 15th of June this year in which they found that large retailers such as Bunnings, Kmart and The Good Guys were using facial recognition technology and biometric data capture. And they were using this technology or they are using this technology without letting their customers know. Mostly the customers were unaware. Sometimes they put up a tiny little sign that says, uh, by the way, we're taking your biometric data and storing your facial uh, features for our database, but we're operating in a largely unregulated environment. Now, the, the intention behind this is probably is probably a reasonable one. You know, Bunnings probably is, is probably uh, implementing these kinds of technology because they want to avoid people stealing from their stores, for example. Now, even though the intention might be okay, because we're operating in a largely unregulated environment, it's actually quite insidious and quite dangerous. And I think we should be alarmed about it. Just imagine if in order to mitigate shoplifting, if Bunnings put an employee out in the parking lot in an unmarked van and started taking the fingerprints of all of the adults and children that walked into the store or even walked through the car park or even walked out front of the car park. I don't think the community would be okay with the idea of staff from major high street retail chains taking the fingerprints of adults and young people uh, who are in the vicinity of their shop front or going into their shop. So because we're in this unregulated environment, I asked these questions and you can read them all here. It appears on page four of this agenda for the 4th of July, 2022. I asked questions about what's going on with bi uh, biometric data capture and facial recognition technology use within our municipality. Uh, and you can see the, the officer's response there continues on to page five. And I think we should watch this space because there may very well need to be some more uh, thought given to regulating this kind of um, this kind of behaviour to make sure that people aren't being exploited, to make sure, for example, that people's um, personal private information, like their facial features and their, and their, you know, essentially their fingerprint, that that information is not being sold on to people who we uh, don't know and people who we don't want it sold onto. So that was that uh, that particular question on notice. Probably the main thing that we talked about at tonight's council meeting was the street trading, formerly uh, known as the footpath trading policy review. And essentially here it is on page seven. This is, uh, it's not talking about food trucks and it's not talking about uh, outdoor dining on private property. It's just talking about predominantly outdoor dining, but other 
street trading activities that typically take place on council land um, uh, under certain circumstances. So last year, there were six applicants for, for permits for street trading. The year before that, there were five applicants for street trading. And this policy basically has some very minor changes in it. But it largely, it points out that essentially the municipality has limited areas for street trading, but the two key locations that we're really talking about are Kingston Beach and also the Kingston CBD around Kingston Park. So uh, in that, there were also some various stipulations that, uh, that are worth pointing out. Here's the new policy here. And it's worth noticing these three different um, categories of uh, footpath zones, they're calling them. There's the pedestrian zone, the curbside zone, and the street trading zone. And in these, it's very difficult to see on your computer, but you can download a copy of the agenda. Here on this diagram, here's the premises, which might be some... Um, uh, you know, a, a food or hospitality venue. And then you've got the pedestrian zone and then you've got the curbside zone and then you've got the, there's the traffic there. So basically the stipulations are, for example, that this curbside zone has to be a minimum of 0 0.6 metres. Uh, the, the entire width of the footpath, it has to be uh, a minimum of three metres for the council to uh, consider that footpath suitable for on-street dining and the uh, curbside zone there in the pedestrian zone where those little footprints are that has to be a minimum of 1.8 meters so there's also a few provisions in there about things like you know on a on a, a day with strong winds that you're not allowed to keep unsecured furniture in that street trading zone um, and various stipulations like that but it's an eminently reasonable policy and if you'd like to find out more about it you can check out the council website that passed unanimously also in tonight's meeting there was the naming of the Alona Foreshore Park and uh, that passed unanimously as well. So if you'd like to find out more, the, the new name of the Foreshore Park there is the Jack Dwyer VC Recreation Park. And so I was pleased to see that council agreed tonight to name the park on the Alona Foreshore Dwyer Park. That's the end of my wrap up for today. If you'd like to find out more, you can always visit my website, gideoncordover.com or get in touch with me on social media. Thanks again for uh, joining me on this roundup and I look forward to seeing you on the next roundup. Have a good night.